February the 23rd, 2022. Guys, you're looking at satellite images over the U.S. and Mexico and parts of southern Canada. The clouds that you're seeing going from the bottom left and headed northeast is a winter storm. Texas, you're going to have a lot to do with this, and it's just going to keep going from there. Also, you've got two different areas that we're seeing the Arctic vortex dip and bring in colder air. One over the Great Lakes and one coming down uh, from Canada on the very west coast of the U.S. There's moisture being pulled off the Gulf of Mexico, too, as we look into this. Also, there's going to be a lot of traffic going from L.A. to the swamp this uh, starting today, I think, from according to some reports. Uh, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so there's this weather could be affecting some of that travel. There's already going to be a lot of uh, additional federal and local government support on these roadways, about 700 guardsmen, things like that, trying to keep uh, exits clear, uh, the whole nine yards. We don't know what's going to happen yet. So just be mindful of what we're talking about and uh, this travel weather because we've seen just uh, in the last few weeks some big pileups, 100 vehicles on the in the snow and ice, things like that. Here's the National Weather Service map. In the uh, pink, guys, you got winter storm warnings. See that coming out of uh, Texas and Oklahoma, Arkansas, further north. And uh, the purple that's surrounding that is winter weather advisories. You've got these hard freeze warnings up in the mountains in California. You've got uh, north of all of this, there are wind chill advisories, and the darker shades of that are wind chill warnings. Uh, even avalanche warnings for you people that are thinking about going snow skiing in Colorado, right? But uh, this is what we're going to be dealing with, and again, that, um, call it the Rose Bowl to the Swamp Parade we're talking about is going to go right through this area. I've traveled these highways going to Phoenix many times, and uh, you get into west, when you start getting into west Texas, it can get hairy, and then you've got a lot of higher elevation from that point on. Now, I want to do a solar report. This image came in, and it's from the CME we saw the other day. It's a different satellite. It orbits the planet, but it's not one that we usually get the live feeds from. But this is a still image, and look at the size of that CME. If you took an image of our planet and scaled it to the sun, just one of those sunspots would probably hold at least a half a dozen of our Earths. Now, this one is from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, also Earth-facing images. Coming around the left side, top left side, is a system we've been watching. It's very large. It's got two very distinct sunspots. We're going to look at it in detail. And notice this filament release uh, in the top right corner of this as it goes around. You're also having these uh, filaments that you can see in the very center of the sun, and they can connect on one end with one of these solar active regions and release just like that image in the top right and cause a CME. But those are filament releases and not solar flares, but they will create a coronal mass ejection. It's a very dark filter for the sun here, but it gives you very distinctly where the two sunspots are, and you can see the white areas around them. Check this out very active there's energy involved in this you can see it flowing both of these sunspots have um, dual magnetic properties and that can cause the arcing we don't know what's going to happen yet they had about three or four vents as they were on the back side of the sun this is same uh, satellite sdo with a different camera the same thing we just saw but in color and that gives you the uh, the color gives you the different polarities of these sunspots or the different magnetic components of them. That can create arcing. Now, Mars was on the back side of the sun during most of the events we're talking about. As it's, and now it's quiet. This is a very good close-up right here. Notice your different color orange and blue areas very close together in those sunspots. And then the green area, this is part of that. Uh, solar hotspot the entire solar activity of this is very wide area and what that does is allow arcing and filaments all around the sunspots we're just going to have to watch them but again mars is on the back side now it's turning towards earth this is important venus is on this side and mercury and what happens is we have a sun a portal that connects to each planet 
and they feed it feeds energy to the earth every 8.2 minutes we'll look at that these are also SDO images different filters applied so you can see different things different energy levels openings in the magnetic canopy where your solar wind comes from and these hot spots it's amazing to me but it's God's creation so that's how it is notice the filament top right right there you'll see some of that releasing we'll have to pay attention to it again top left is what we're watching the brown areas the long roping areas those are filaments and they can pop out one end like a whip like motion when they connect with one of these hot spots so we're watching it you see the one in the top right explode so we got filaments that are facing and we got these sunspots coming around but right there you'll see one of these rise up and then throw out a pretty good size cme we have those there the dark blue areas are magnetic canopy openings solar wind streams right through there and the other areas a lot of solar wind is caught up in these magnetic loops and pull back to the surface but the blue areas are openings and that's telling you that our solar wind is going to continue and what i mean by that is an elevated solar wind we always have a solar stream but with these openings that's when you see the stronger auroras and the stronger effect on the earth's uh, magnetosphere and going into our till filter really highlights some of the active areas against and it eliminates some of the other areas that you're seeing but you still can see these dark filaments there's a lot of this activity it's kind of unusual around the bottom of it switching to another satellite that's earth facing is the sd excuse me the lasco c2 camera and this goes back 72 hours starting on the 19th coming up into the current time notice your time stamp at the bottom earlier we were seeing activity the last couple of days it's been quiet on that side there's not a planet close enough to uh i think cause what we're seeing here's the sun in the center and the gray dots this is venus and mercury earth is in the green area here in this circle and what i'm saying is now the sunspots are starting to turn around you're going to have the magnetic uh, connection between venus and earth as it gets into this area and as it turns to the right a little further you're going to pull in venus it's what i'm talking about is called a flux transfer event it's our ft E occurs when a magnetic portal opens in the Earth's magnetosphere through which high energy particles flow from the Sun. It happens in 8.2 minutes. This connection, while previously thought to be permanent, has been found to be brief. They're flying satellites through it and getting those measurements. Earth's magnetosphere and the Sun's magnetic field are constantly pressed against one another on the day side of Earth. Approximately every eight minutes, these fields briefly merge, forming a temporary portal between the Earth and the Sun, through which high-energy high particles such as solar wind can flow. The portal takes the shape of a magnetic cylinder about the width of the Earth. Current observations place the portal at four times the size of Earth. So the Earth is in the middle of a giant portal but that's connecting our magnetosphere it's hitting that instead of the planet the, the magnetic fields are similar to earth or common through the other planets messenger has dis, uh, discovered them on mercury's magnetic field and it's they're called magnetic ropes is another term for this and even saturn they picked up that from satellites in the outer solar system has these connection points to the sun think about it uh, what does that have to do with our gravity but it definitely is a feed from what malachi calls shemesh and uh, of energy to all the planets it's like the sun is the feeder but these magnetic portals also when they connect to the sun can cause solar flares and because the earth and venus and mercury and mars are in the inner solar system that you see more effect this is actual uh, a graphic of the uh, information that came in through the satellites about the portal between uh, Saturn and the Sun check this out this is how the satellites had, were determining where the energy was it says a twisted magnetic field structure previously never seen before at Saturn has now been detected for the first time using instrumentation built at UCL and Imperial College when the sun's magnetic field interacts with the earth's magnetic field the magnetosphere a complex process occurs called magnetic reconnection 
which can twist the field into a helical shape. You're seeing it here also on Saturn. So my point of going through all that was as the sun turns towards Earth and to Venus and Mercury, then you're going to see energy transferred. And what will happen is there's, even though the, um, this transfer tunnel, this magnetic rope, can be four times larger than our planet, it's only a small spot on the sun. In other words, the entire sun is not involved. And that t the place where this magnetic rope touches the sun floats across the surface. There used to be instrumentation that was measured, that measured the location, but they shut it down a few years ago. It's not easily accessible now. And But when a sunspot rotates around and, say, it crosses the spot, where the Earth's magnetic uh, connection is on the sun, you'll see these bursts of CMEs. I've seen X flares occur at that point. So that's what we're going to be watching for for the next few days. We know how powerful those two sunspots are and have been. They're kind of in a free zone now with Mars is on, on the backside of the sun. And so we're about to see uh, what will happen between the sun's connection to Earth, Venus, and Mercury. We're watching you. You watch it, guys. It's a heads up. Be safe.